In Proverbs chapter 22, from verse 17, we read, Incline your ear and hear the words of the wise, and apply your heart to my knowledge, for it is a pleasant thing if you keep them within you. Let them all be fixed upon your lips, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I have instructed you today, even you. Have I not written to you excellent things, of counsels and knowledge, that I may make you know the certainty of the words of truth, that you may answer words of truth to those who send to you? Do not rob the poor because he is poor, nor oppress the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause and plunder the soul of those who plunder them. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together, particularly from Proverbs 22, verses 19 to 21. So that your trust may be in the Lord, I have instructed you today, even you. And these instructions are written down. Verse 18 says, Let them all be fixed upon your lips. That is, if we are going to take heed to these things, we need to talk about them. We need to discuss them. It's all very nice to sit at home and read your Bible or to listen to somebody who preaches. But that's just a one-way thing. If we are going to engage with God and in God's Word, we need a two-way interaction. Because it's the things that we speak that are the things that we really take ownership of. If somebody says, do you love God? We can say yes. But that's different from saying, I love God. I choose to follow him. There is much more ownership in the latter statement. So God has given us words. We have heard them with our ears. And he has written them down so that they are fixed Have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge? But it's not sufficient if they just remain in the book. They must come out into our lips. For indeed, judgment, Jesus says, will be based on the things that we say. It won't be what goes into your mouth that condemns you, but what comes out of your mouth, out of your lips. And so, We can choose what we speak, but we need to order our lives so that we include opportunities to discuss the words of God, to search them out, to share them with one another, to tell others the things that we have discovered, to discuss the things that others have discovered from God's word, so that we might encourage one another to trust the Lord. That's why Paul urges Christians to continue to meet together, that you might encourage one another. And you encourage one another by reminding them of the words of Scripture, particularly the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the explanation of those words given by the apostles. So God has given us, in a book, all that we need. These are excellent things. They are counsels and knowledge There's the examples of godly men and the examples of wicked men. And we see how God's word works out in their lives so that we can trust the Lord and so that we can be sure that God's word is true. Jesus declared, thy word is truth. And he lived his life on the basis of the words that were recorded in the Old Testament and added to those words, when he said, You have heard that it was said, but I say unto you. And he lifted the bar. So instead of the bar being, You shall not murder, the bar is now, You shall not speak evil and curse your brother. Because words have power. Wholesome words are words of healing, encouragement, of blessing. But words of cursing depress the spirit cause despair, cause lack of hope. The scriptures are full of hope. The end of the Old Testament is talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the New Testament in the book of Revelation. Jesus says, Surely 
I am coming quickly. We have to look forward to the future, not to be overwhelmed by the present. But if we don't have a hope for the future, then we will despair at times for the present. Why are so many people committing suicide in Australia, particularly young people? Because they have not been given a hope for the future. They have just been hearing negative things. They've been cursed. They've been criticised. They've been complained about. And they are made to feel worthless. But nobody is worthless. We are all valuable. God loves every one of us and desires a relationship with us. But if nobody has introduced us to the Lord Jesus, then we may be oblivious of that. And then we will despair. God has given us his word. It's in the book. But someone must tell us. And we are that someone with respect to other people. So, apply your heart to my knowledge. It is a pleasant thing to keep them with you. Let them all be fixed upon your lips, that your trust may be in the Lord. We must speak the things that we believe to ensure that we will walk by them. And these are excellent things, which is why, for 20 years now, I've been reading the scriptures each day on local radio that I might speak them out, that I might live by them myself, but also that you might hear them with the hope that you will get excited by the word of God, that you will benefit from the certainty of the words of truth, for God's word is truth, and that you may answer words of truth to those who send to you. In discussion, people are always talking about things that happen and might happen and would happen and how to respond to situations. And what's our contribution to those discussions? Do we add despair? Do we add just according to our own wisdom? Or do we share the wisdom that we have learned from God? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Paul rejoiced that Timothy from childhood had learned the scriptures that had made him wise to salvation. We must learn these scriptures to become wise because all wisdom is ultimately hidden in God and in our Lord Jesus Christ. He made the world and he knows better than anyone how it operates and he has given us the instructions so that we can negotiate our path through the world. But so few people take heed to the instructions he has left. He says, I have instructed you today, even you. God has given us instructions. Why do you call me Lord and not do the things that I say, Jesus said? For God's words are true, absolutely true. And they will work out in our lives. And if we don't know them, well, we may never understand what's happening. If we don't know them, then the encouragement and advice we give to others is likely to be wrong. Of course, our culture and our society has heard the word of God in the past, and so, to a certain degree, the things that our society says are words of truth because They have been derived from the words of truth of God. But if we don't keep referencing the source, then we will drift away. There are many contrary voices giving us advice that is contrary to God's word in the world today. As a boy, I had to plough the paddock. And when you're ploughing the paddock, you need to keep your eye on the markers that show where you should go. Otherwise, you leave great big gaps and don't do the job properly. Have I not written you excellent things of counsels and knowledge that I may make you know the certainty of the words of truth, that you may answer words of truth to those who send to you?